This is the Creativity Show. I'm so glad you're here. Today we're going to continue talking about all things creative. And I did this jacket yesterday with these metallic leaf stencils that I have here. We have a bunch of stencils laid out to show you my design process, which is to put everything I might want to work with for whatever I'm working on out and allow myself what I like to say is every idea is worth having not every idea is worth doing so in the design phase in the problem solving phase you know what am I going to put on that jacket I like to try every idea I can come up with it's like a imagination exercise like doing bench pressing for your brain. And then I pick the one that feels the strongest, feels the most natural, the funnest, whatever. Uh, whatever. Usually it's, it's either the first idea I have or one of the first. The instincts are a great part of our creative process, learning to hear that inner voice and learning to trust ourselves is, it's a superpower to be free in our imagination of freedom. Nothing and no one else can take away from us. If we have a vivid imagination, we're wealthy. The wealth of imagination, no matter what else our circumstances may be, we can imagine a better circumstance and if we're disciplined we can make our life a little bit more what we imagine is our perfect life every day and if we keep doing that we get ever closer there is no perfection in life but moving towards a life that gives us the most joy purpose fulfillment is a a state of grace and happiness increasing, health increasing, serenity increasing. So imagine the life you want and do a little bit each day to make your life more that life. And sooner, if you're blessed um, with a long enough life, you get ever closer. Every day is um, it's a great feeling. So. Give yourself permission to imagine freely and then contemplate what you imagine. And I have created the life I wanted. As a little girl, there was chaos and, and aggression and unhappiness in my family. And what I wanted was a home uh, that was peaceful, where the people I shared it with Treat, we treat each other respectfully and where there's the tools that make me happy, which is creativity. And my son, Bodie, and the Bodie the Movie Maker, his YouTube channel, asking, asked me to work with him, named us Mother Son Productions. So we have the tools. His tools are technology. Mine are hands-on. So we we really can help each other fill out the other part of the creative process. So that's, um, that's what I want to start the show with. Give yourself permission to imagine the life you want and what you can do today to make it a little more like that. If you're too overwhelmed, like I have another policy, when I'm overwhelmed down, I organize something that will help me do uh, more of the things that give me joy, which for me is creativity. So this jacket we're gonna show you, I did this yesterday, some of the process of um, stenciling it. I used four different acrylic paints, bronze, copper, gold, silver, and the four metallic leaf shapes. So it's a very simple, but I think it's got some nice, unique, instead of just a plain black jacket. 
So we have some of the footage of me doing that, uh, the stenciling on this to show you. Do you can you show it from here, Bodhi, or do you have to go in the other? All right. So he's over there behind the equipment. Uh, I'm over here in front of the equipment. <laughs> That's pretty obvious, huh? <laughs> uh, yeah. So. Okay, great. Well, while it's showing, I can take it off and get ready to show you the next part because it's a bit warm for inside. Um, this beautiful, feels like spring in February in Duluth. Hi, Joni. Good afternoon to you. I'm so glad you're here. It's always, it's so nice to connect with you on these virtual visits. Um, I love knowing you're there. It does feel like connection. And it does, as I say often, it's a way we can all walk lighter on the planet by connecting virtually. That's why I call them virtual visits. And we don't have to drive or fly or get on any transportation. I've discovered over this last four years of when social distancing started that I don't really need to go anywhere my feet can't take me. I've been walking and not getting in vehicles um, and I've continued it because it's peaceful and it's lovely and it's a small thing I can do to help with the, you know, keeping my carbon footprint tiptoeing um, and if enough of us think in the terms of what can we do to reduce the carbon we're admitting into the atmosphere to keep the planet from warming and the other deleterious effects of using too much fossil fuels um, we, can, we can all together make a difference and it feels good to try it, it's like hopeful and 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 I, I feel part of the solution instead of part of the problem so um, I can see Bodhi's t tapping around on screens over there is there something I should okay so I forgot to get the easel from downstairs but we have this and they can see this I'll start showing it and I'm showing the jacket Okay, once you're done with the jacket, maybe you show the stencils from around the room and uh, and the I'll... jacket's done, so now I'll roll this camera around. Show, tell us what you want to see. Um, show that there's flowers, stencils. This is my design process is set things out. I'm going to start using um, the pollinators, the insects and birds and flowers and the warblers and wildflowers and we've got leaves and grasses and uh, wings and dragonfly insects all spread out so I can do my design designing seeing what I have to work with with over 300 stencil designs I'm not putting them all out at once so I pick the category that I want to work with. And you can show them the, the flowers over on the on the fine art table. If you go over there. Let's zoom in on I'm going to get this one to show. So this one um, was the first one I did with this idea of putting four of the same stencil pointing two different directions by turning the stencil over. Um, 
and finishing them four different ways, which is what I'm gonna do with this one in front of the camera. And that's what I'm gonna do with this one today is, is four different finishes for this orchid in front of you. So you can show the, um, the stencil part of this. So this is something we can use the stencil and leave it, you know, with one paint, or we can finish it with, uh, I use pencils and acrylic paints on this one. Today I'm gonna use uh, metallic inks to show you a, yet another medium we can use to make the stencils um, more painterly each, each time we do it. We can uh, make each of the stencils. Joni said, ooh, super excited for the warbler and butterfly stencils. That's, um, that's coming up uh, probably Thursday with my next live stream. I'm going to start getting into the all the uh, all the other stencils there's so many uh coming up and we'll be putting those out on the patreon soon as well yes exactly one after another we're we're putting them up on patreon so the members get them for no additional fee and anybody that just wants one or a few stencils can also get them individually. We're going to do a little clap because now we're recording the overhead camera. Now we're going to sync them together. Okay. So we're still showing the real time results. Do you want me to? That. No, just finish that up. It's just a couple minutes, right? And I will get my colors ready. I can still talk about this and you hear me. And this is positioned right for the camera to see it. All right, so what I do with my metallic inks, which you'll, I think you can see from this camera. When that's done, okay, so I'll wait. Um, but I usually um, put my paints like I have my warm colors in one row <clears throat> and my cool colors in another row so that I can easily find what will work nice, nicely. I also make color keys and put numbers on them so the top of the acrylic paints have the number painted on them with the paint itself so I have a better, uh, faster way instead of opening container after container to find the color I want, I can just look at my key and the corresponding number and move quickly, which uh, isn't always nice. So let me know when that's done, and I'll start on this. Well, I'm thinking halfway through. I think they get the idea. They see three of them. Okay, that'll work then. So then we'll move to this. And uh, are we there now? We are. Okay. So I'm going to start with this. These metallic inks are, are really beautiful. They have a sheen to them. I might have used a little bit too big of a brush, so I'm going to start with the right size brush. And I'm going to try to just get the edge. Which I have my magnifying glasses on because it's... Uh, Delicate work.
One of the things I love about painting is uh, with a, with the watercolor painting, which is most of my fine art is, well, all of it is, is watercolor. Sometimes I mix mediums like pencil and watercolor and every once in a while acrylics or inks, but it's mostly watercolor and what I love about it is you have to go with it. It's like dancing on paper. You have to go with the move. You can't can't control the way water flows and the pigment flows in the water. So there's our first pink um, and Let's do another. I was uh, getting a close up with both cameras. For those wondering, we've got a camera on a tripod. Let me roll around. And I just thought this was so nice, so I went in close with this one at the same time as the other camera. I'm hearing a voice. Yeah, it's coming through my headphones. Your voice. Wow, I didn't recognize myself. Okay. And I'm going to turn it this way so I have a little better angle. Doing Sumi brush stroke as my very first visual art medium really taught me how to flow the way they teach <laughs> even how you hold the instrument so that you can move it in any direction but it's not a tight, it's a flowing hold, not a tension creating grip. And when it's delicate like this, sometimes I, I'm aware of my breath. And so I don't hold my breath. I exhale through the delicate parts. So it's like my breath is flowing with the pigment. And And I check to make sure I'm not getting tense in my hand and blocking the energy flow. You also want to move at a pace that allows the pigment to flow but not puddle. If you hesitate, that's why Sumi brush stroke on rice paper with the Sumi ink was such an excellent beginning because if you hesitate at all, the Sumi ink pools and makes a big black area on the on the rice paper. So you get to see um, the flow and if you're hesitating or stopping, you will see it. It's like, I like to dance on roller skates because you have to go with it. 
I like to play a bamboo flute because you have to be friends with your breath. I like prose poetry. That's my writing style. So everything I like in, in creativity is about going with the flow. So ain't that sweet? <laughs> ain't that sweet? Let's see, that goes in there. I'm happy with that. Yeah, nice. And my my inexpensive little uh, generic cheaters, they help. It's it's important to be able to see. <laughs> so now I'm gonna I'm going with a warm color, so opposite it. Um, I'm going to go with cool, cool, warm, warm. The, uh, the, the brain likes contrast. Uh, it helps us appreciate what we're looking at. Let's see, where's the right size card? Here we go. These are gorgeous. By the way, I agree with what you said in your intro about ideas. I think it's following more blanket ideas than that muscle is strengthening my base. So show me these. Beautiful. Beautiful. Well, it's like any other muscle. The more we use it, the stronger we get. And there's a lot in life that... Um, tries to, well, fear always tries to control, love tries to support. So there's a lot of fear-based voices in the world, and they will say things to us, like, to me, you preach. That's a fear-based voice. When my skating buddy said, preach, Claire, preach. He meant it as a compliment, but I've heard it from a couple different women in my life as if it were something bad to talk about what we believe in. I say what I think can help others that, that I've learned, and I've had a while to learn it because I'm not a young person anymore, so this is when I have the most to say because I've had the longest life. And tomorrow I'll know a little bit more. And uh, why should we not share what we've learned that hel has helped us? And self-organizing sexism is people not trusting women who speak up, not valuing their own voice, their own insights. Why not share them? Why not help each other with what we, we know? It's socially acceptable to gossip about women, but it's not socially acceptable to share what we have that can help the world and help others. That's, that's broken. That's, that's wrong thinking, and I'm, I'm not going to participate in it. I was in my 20s when a dear friend, Kay Lukanen, here in Duluth, told me the other women didn't trust me because I didn't gossip. And I'm like, well, I'm the one you guys should trust because I'm not going to talk about you when you leave the room. And she laughed, and we became dear friends. Um, but I've had a lot of women in my life who, you know, they want me to be in the clique that talks about the other women that aren't in the clique, and that doesn't feel good. I don't think it's, it's, it's good for them, it's good for the world, and it feels like spiritual indigestion. It feels like being really hungry, needing nutrition, and s slamming down some grease balm. That's what gossip feels like, and, and so I decided very young. I, I didn't want to participate in it. So I tell my own stories, and some of them have other people in them, but I try not to name them. 
because I don't really want to talk about other people. I want to talk about bigger things, <laughs> bigger ideas, things that can help me feel better and hopefully help the other person that's listening and hopefully inspire them to share their unique, beautiful insights with the world. So let us women not have opinions about other people's hairstyle or clothing or inconsequential things. Let us shore each other up. Let us celebrate each other's differences and be inclusive of the differences instead of only liking people that are like us. And it's so self-organizing sexism, I like to call it, that women can bond by gossiping about the woman that's not there. Well, who does that elevate? Not the women they're gossiping about, not the women who are doing the gossiping. It doesn't elevate anyone. And I don't, unless someone is dangerous, I don't need to talk about anyone else. Um, I have plenty that I'm thinking about, ruminating on, plenty of observations, and that's what I want to share and offer to others, and I want to hear theirs. I pride myself in being a good listener. I have one of my friends and started uh, early as a creativity client when I was coaching, and she said to me, you see the best in people and you reflect it back to them. That's what I want to do. And that elevates me and them and so let there be more of that and women not fear-based competition afraid that if some other woman is getting some attention that they're less safe is this in the right place all right so so like I said, we're going to go for cool, cool, warm, warm. So I'm going to go for this green. Take a sip of OK. We there? One of the many things I love about doing art is it requires that we're in the moment. We're right here, right now. We can't be distracted and flow. And it turns out it's it's everything I, I love. The bamboo flute, dancing on skates, telling uh, my own story in poetic prose. It all not only requires that I be here right here, right now, but that I also be open to my feelings, which inform me and inspire Feelings initiate thought, express, they stimulate the immune system. I say it all the time because we're in a world that has some major confusion. And part of that confusion is that 
feelings aren't good and we're not supposed to show them or have them, but they're our guides. They're, they inform us. They give us insights that we wouldn't have if we didn't have feelings. They can be a warning system. They can be a guide to what will heal us or or empower us or make us happy. So everything is beautiful about feelings. Of course, I try to go expeditiously through unpleasant feelings, but and luxuriate in pleasant feelings, but I, I try to not ever ignore. And Joni says, your words are nourishing spiritual food. It gives me energy for good things throughout the day. Thank you, Joni. What a kind and sweet thing to say. And I uh, I really appreciate that, and as I've shared, you know, there have been people that have put me down for speaking my truth, and we are in, in a sexist world for a long time now, and women are supposed to not speak. I heard a woman, the third wife of Hugh Hefner, talking, I think the title of her book was something like, Only Say Nice Things. And we as women know we're supposed to always be kind and cheerful and supportive, but nobody is that all the time or should be that all the time. We, we get to be whole, real people and have every kind of feeling and accept ourselves and even the difficult stuff have has a positive value it can empower us to change things that aren't right if we allow ourselves to be outraged by it and i don't feel sorry for myself that i've gotten so much criticism in my life because i speak up because it's empowered me to know how important it is to speak up and I forgive the people who say those hurtful things and I feel compassion for them that that they must not feel like what they have to say anybody's listening or that they don't give themselves permission to say it because they fear not being respected or accepted. And, you know, women are not supposed to uh, be anything but cheerful and supportive in a sexist world. But the truth is, we're everything. We're, we're all of it. And we can only reach our full potential if we accept that we have every feeling just like everybody does and use them all as fuel to grow and change and get stronger and there's the green one now we're going to go for oh let's go for a, I try to get these caps back on right away so nobody evaporates before let's see about this this pinky. That's the right size brush. There it is. I put a little X that I erase later in the center so that I can balance these. I don't um, measure and be exact because I think it feels more natural. It looks more flowing. Oop, that brush is 
not been used yet, so it's a little hard, so I'm softening it up. So I think a little bit of imperfection feels more natural. Uh, it's a very soft color, but that's all right. We don't have a problem with soft. Soft is good. Yes. Uh, if you remind me at the end, I'd be happy to read. You got a testimonial, a blurb that came through from Kathy Bogan. Uh, I'd love to hear it. You could read it now. Okay. Well, Can one... they hear you? What? Can they hear you? I do believe so. Okay. I haven't heard this yet, and this woman has known me since my 20s. Um, I'm going to tell a little bit about her. She came when I was asked to uh, work with people in mental distress at Miller Dwan um, Hospital in my 20s. And it, it's, a, it's a beautiful... It was a beautiful event in my life because the uh, a therapist there came to my adult education class, A Way to Learn to Dance for Joy was the name of it. And um, she asked me to come to the hospital and volunteer, which I did. And then I said to the patients, I like everybody else have bills and I, I need to make some money so I have to get a paying job. I can't afford to do this and they created such a um, support system that they opened a position at the hospital to, uh, and I thought it was political that they were just going to interview people and hire someone else because I don't even have a high school diploma let alone a credential. Um, stopped going to school regularly at seven, blah, blah, blah. So I didn't think there was any chance I'd get hired, but they did hire me. And K Kathy, who sent in this that I haven't heard yet, came to one of my sessions um, and asked if she could observe. And I said, I don't let anyone observe, but you may join us. And she did. So... All these years later, we reconnected. And so what did she have to say? Let me read it. I first met Claire in the 1970s when she was conducting healing through creative movement workshops at the Miller Dwan Hospital Adult Psychiatric Unit where I was doing a nursing practicum practicum pra uh we got some nursing uh lingo practicum um i had asked her if i might observe her work and she said sure but you'll have to join in her intuitive leadership for these workshops was both innovative and effective creating a safe environment for the patients to experience and express their thoughts and feelings through movement. Claire continues to evolve as an artist and healer, reaching out to others through her writing and videos on her YouTube channel, The Creativity Show. She covers a wide variety of topics ranging from coaching for artists and writers to easy to follow instructions for creating artwork using a variety of techniques and affordable materials. In addition to providing channels for people of all ages to express themselves creatively, Claire speaks directly to her viewers with kindness, empathy, and good humor. It is always exciting to see what will come up in her next venture. That's nice. That's Thank very, you. very nice uh, blurb by Kathy Bogan. Thank you, Kathy. Very, very sweet and... I really, really appreciate it. Um, we all like to get feedback, and 
uh, I, I really, really appreciate it when people help me see myself and what I have to give. And like everybody else, help heal me from the unkind things that people have said. And the more we speak up, I can understand why women are afraid to speak up, because the more we speak up, you can't be admired by some without making others angry. So, you know, the more we speak up, the more we may be maligned and have fear-based people try to control us and try to quiet us down. So it's very healing to hear people, uh, you know, saying supportive things. Um, and it, it really helps me let go of any of the things that aren't supportive. And may we all do that for each other. All right. We got, we got the pink one. Now, uh, this feels done. I'm not going to do the, the leaves because I just like it. And so if you like it, leave it alone. <laughs> That's, so how's that? And let me see if I can find a eraser to get those little funkies off the center there. My little guide. So there we are. Da da. Okay. Should I hold it up, or are we good? Um, you, can, you can hold it up to the main camera. You can. Maybe. Well, we'll have to expose it for you guys real quick. I'm going to back up over there so I can hold it here. Give me a little more. OK. So this is one stencil used uh, from both sides. And four different metallic inks to outline the gold flowers. And it turns into, in my opinion, a lovely little piece of art. That's how simple that is. And I'm going to do this um, and other, other uh, with other mediums finishing with all of the, we have 10 different flowers. This is one of them out as SVGs and we're gonna keep them going. There's eight more flowers to put out and then we're gonna start putting out the the warblers or the pollinators or the cranes and we're just going to keep it going till all the stencils are out for you to enjoy and design either art, home decor, fun, fast, frugal fashion, <laughs> whatever you want to do with it and I love seeing what you do with it and uh, Joni sent in a beautiful um, photograph of her putting the rose stencil on her guitar case and I really love seeing what you guys do with the stencils and hearing your ideas and feedback it's extremely gratifying um, nothing makes me happier than sharing the superpower of our own creativity uh, the healing, life enhancing of connecting with our own imaginations and using creativity to step into the flow and increase our happiness and express our feelings to stimulate our immune system and make us healthier, happier and make our lives 
a little more what we want it to be every day and give that to, to uh, ourselves, our loved ones, our community, and the world. So thanks for being here. Is there anything else that you want to share, Bo, before we uh, sign off today? I think we got all of it. And if I missed any of your guys' comments, uh, thank you so much for making them, and we'll address them next time. Yeah. And besides the stencils and the different ways you can use them, eventually we're going to be showing the jewelry I make and the dishes and the frame designs and the fine art and the furniture and you just there's lots here at the Emerald Lady and we're going to share it all with you on Mondays and Thursdays at these virtual visits at noon central time and you can see any and all of these videos on the Creativity Show YouTube channel after they're done um, and share them with friends so if you enjoyed it please comment like subscribe tell friends all that good stuff um, i love the word of mouth way of promoting this and that's what we're going to keep doing and it gives me uh, just joy and faith in humanity that that we can share what we love with the world and people will tell other people about it I heard the Tibetan meditation bell, which means sure. something. The comment bell. Uh, <laughs> Kathy Cato said, beautiful. Thanks, Claire, on Facebook. And Joni is uh, sending the waving heart emoji on YouTube. Love you guys. And thanks, Kathy. And um, next uh, live stream virtual visit, we're going to share Kathy Cato's uh, testimonial. Uh, she was a creativity coaching client. And please tell Dom that Joni's guitar case is leather, and he asked about using stencils on leather. So you can show him that. And I'd, I'm going to be doing some stenciling on leather coats I have found at used stores or people gave to me. Um, soon, so we're going to keep it going. All right. Okay, thanks for showing up and really appreciate it. And see you on Thursday. And between now and then, stay creative.